we did a previous video about the vacuum cleaner and if we can actually use the ego blower to create enough vacuum to possibly make it into a, a coilless vacuum cleaner so we got enough responses to um, seem interested so so the first thing i decided to do was take a charger apart i'm just going to keep the electronics the boards good i uh, just keep it for spare parts i want to take it apart and use it for housing because it's very uh, well ventilated we also have the battery connector So after we took it apart, we actually put a half inch hole in it for the switch. I have a lighted uh, green rocker switch to install on a battery charging housing. I also wanted to go through and just punch a few holes from three eighths to half inch holes to just give proper ventilation. We don't want to um, hinder any of the exiting air or exhaust air coming out of the blower. So that's one reason I decided to use this house and I already had several battery chargers I already had the connector I already had a good spot for a switch had the ego logo I really like that and it gave me a way to mount it and even keep up under it opened up to, to make sure we don't impede the airflow and here I'm just taking the um, the plate that had the house that the plate to house the fan I'll capture the fan and the charger I'm just cutting it off and just using the backing plate where it goes on for the connector itself and just simply putting the connector back in with the uh, red and the blue wire coming out to connect uh, to connect our 56 volt power next I'm just going to make sure we got plenty of room here for our controller this is a up to 72 volt rated controller that we um, looked at using in a previous video where we did a BLDC blower um, replacement and it actually worked fairly well on the bench I hadn't really used it that much with actual um, BLDC for ego here I'm just going to put a resistor for the lighted switch it's going to be a green LED here rated for 12 volts we just need to drop 48 more volts so we just say around 60 volts and it's already rated for 12 volts so 48 you know using Ohm's law here 48 divided by at the most 20 milliamps somewhere around 2.4 K is what we need to drop so this is a 2.2 K resistor we'll just double check here looks good we'll just take this and put some heat shrink over it and we'll tie it in here where the blue and the black go together so that's going to be the negative from the battery terminal to the negative for the controller and then we'll just tie in and come off a 2.2 K up to the light on the switch we'll just slide our heat shrink on and uh, heat shrink this down to make sure it doesn't come in contact with anything we got a female terminal on the resistor on one end and we're just going to slide it into our lever nut and tie it into our negative Here I'm just taking a clothes hanger and just bending some wire. I decided to, <clears throat> I decided to use the wire as the capture or retain device for the heat sink or the controller. I'll just put some foam in there and keep everything spaced off. And then the, the spring action of the wire actually be kind of nice and neat. And then it also, instead of impeding the airflow across anything I could mount for the heat sink, it'll actually be a little bit of addition to the heat sink so I just thought it'd be a good uh, a good way to mount it and if I go to the older style controller it's the same exact heat sink because I used it off the old controller I used that same heat sink on this controller that does not come with one I got my faulty blower in here and I'm just taking the housing off I've already taken the Phillips screws out of the housing removing the housing and here we just want to get the blower assembly out and this is pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy we also looked at this a little bit in the um, troubleshooting video we did about a year or so ago on a blower where we actually did not 
truly fix the the speed controller but we did a troubleshooting video for it I did fix this controller I'm not going to show it on this video because it'll be too time consuming but you'll see later in this video that I'm testing this out and I have a um, 20 amp fuse sticking out I replaced a MOSFET and I replaced the fuse and it does work here I'm just removing motor wires from the blower assembly so we can do some testing I just want to hook up the motor leads here to our controller I got the potentiometer somewhere around halfway just want to start it up here and see how it does install our battery flip her on here and immediately I do smell something it doesn't smell right it's turning okay I'm about to cut it off and yeah it does go south I don't know if the MOSFET short at first or if actually the um the BLDC motor in that bad unit was was already having some issues so I don't know for sure but I'm just going to go with my old tried and true 50 volt BLDC I just clipped the 50 volt capacitor off and I'm going to put the 63 volt capacitor out of the ego blower. I'm going to put it on the bus there. I'm just going to tie it into the same as the 56 volt input because it goes across the same exact bus. And we do know that that 63 volt cap is good enough for the BODC that in the ego blower. So, so here we've got our connector ready to go. We got our pot turned down. We got some foam here pre-cut that's going to make a good a good cushion here for it. Even got the cap cut out so we can lay it in there and just put our wire over the heat sink just like before. So thinking ahead there, we already had a, a replacement very easy. That was my, my backup plan was to use the 50 volt controller because it is my, my tried and true go-to. I do like that little controller a lot for the money. It's really good. So I do have a 20 amp fuse here. I'm going to tuck it away. I don't think I showed that before. Um, all I got to do now is attach the motor leads and we'll be ready to go. So I want to show you this bucket lid that I purchased. It is a gamma lid and it's a very neat uh, bucket lid where it's got a seal. It uh, it turns it turns and uh, tightens up and has a nice seal. So I thought it might would make a really good um, application. I thought it might be a really good application for it to use it. Uh, for this vacuum because we can uh, take it off easily to replace the filter. This is just a regular shop vac filter that I ordered to try. So I got the circle drawn out. I'm going to put four holes in the lid to make it easy for us to go around with our jigsaw and cut and just cut that circle out. It doesn't take but a few minutes to cut it out. It cuts through it with ease. Just a little bit difficult but due to the way that the um, the cross section is in there. I should have went with a little bit longer blade, but I, I was able to just hold it up and get through there. It take just a few minutes. I didn't worry about changing my blade out. Now we have our hole for our blower assembly. Here I'm just simply taking a deburring tool and going around the whole circle and now I just want to take some foam that I've cut out to fit in these rectangular holes I just want to glue them down temporarily till we can silicone around and uh, just want to make the best seal we can not only for the tube of the the blower but also as the filter as we go to set the filter down over the blower tube I'm thinking about having a good flat surface there which was the only thing about the gamma lid that I didn't like was that crossway, but I think I think we can overcome that easily. So after cutting this little notch and removing the tube, I think this is how I'm going to mount it: is is take off the second part of the tube. We have our inlet and our exhaust. And I think we're just going to mount it and the filter should be able to go over it and hopefully the filter is long enough and it does appear to be so. So now a gamma seal lid don't quite seal so good with the hole in it, but I think it's going to work out very well for the blower. Just do it like this and silicone around it. I think it's going to work out great. 
I'm really liking how that's looking. So with some silicone around, we just push it and hold it. And we'll just let it stay that way for over an hour or so. And then I'll come back and I'll apply some silicone around the top part. Of course, I got to get my finger in it. We got to smear it around there and uh, do a check with the filter here. And this is how I was going to do the filter just for, with Velcro straps for now. And by the way, this is nothing but a Folgers coffee uh, lid. I was going to make something out of Lexan and I keep plenty of these lids and containers around and man, it just fit perfect. I just, I saw that it was a little bit flimsy. So that is just a black piece of cardboard I painted to go just to give it a little bit of rigidity. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more um, stable. I'm just afraid that it, it might would have pulled in. And once the filter gets clogged up, of course, it wouldn't hurt anything on the test not to have it. But just if the filter does get clogged up, it could possibly start pulling in. And here I just have the, the repair controller. As you can see the little 20 amp fuse sticking out of the board where I repaired it and put the MOSFET on it and um, trying it out here and it seems to work. I just got the pot turned down low and I have a one inch hole. Um, I have a one inch hose hooked to it for testing and I do get some vacuum. The rotation is correct. But I do want to go from a one inch to a, a larger diameter vacuum hose. So I had to use my trick with the um, hole saw with a hole saw inside of a hole saw because I had already drilled the hole there. But now I want to hook up the controller the way I want to run it. So I do have the 50 volt um, BODC controller with the pot turned all the way down uh, as a temporary measure here to check rotation. Looks like everything's going to fit. But before I mount it, I want to check rotation. And that rotation looks to be uh, backwards. So after flipping the wires around on the output, you can turn the pot all the way up. Man, it is a beast. It's like it's pulling the wires tight. I couldn't even quite hold it. Wasn't expecting to be quite so strong. So now I'm just going to look at, at putting the um, the control and battery housing on there. And I'm using some really long standoffs here and just some long bolts bent over in the corners. So I'm just securing it right now with just two, uh, two corners. And after some testing, I might bring that gap down. But for testing, I want to get as much exhaust air as I can. And I also want to be able to get to my wiring because I do want to do some current checks with the amp clamp and things of that nature as well. So that's the reason why that looks a little bit funny there. I do want to keep it, keep it spaced up until I know I don't need that much airflow. So everything about that housing was meant for airflow. Um, it's an airflow for the controller, airflow for the battery, and it's going to be airflow, of course, coming across the BODC, which is very important, especially since we are limiting the inlet, which is one concern I had for this design. So that's what it looks like on the preliminary chip. Not as much suction as the shop that you have, but still a tremendous amount of airflow. Let's see how it goes with the mess that we made so far, building its own self here. Very, very good with the plastic pieces, even got up the cardboard there. Can definitely feel the heat coming out of it. So keep in mind it's already 99 to 100 degrees in Georgia here in August. And it's already starting off at 100 degrees, but I just wanted to show a quick blur image in here of up to 125 degree air coming out because we are restricting and that BODC is creating some heat. So I probably wouldn't run this for a long period of time. I don't want to run the risk of, uh, of messing up that BODC blower. So another option, if you do come across an old shop vac, I mean, is it a way to drive the shop vac impeller? instead of straightening out of the boiler. So, 
don't expect no Mythbusters uh, stuff here. I'm not getting my lips close to it by no means, but it still is intimidating nonetheless. We know that neither one of them are positive displacement or a multi-stage type uh, impeller or fan blade, but the Ego is more of a mixed flow impeller like a high volume, and the shop vac is more of a closed channel impeller. So it's meant for higher pressure or higher differential pressure between the two zones. I did want to show before this video ended the teardown of that BODC that failed on us in case you thought it was interesting. The cone comes right off with the Phillips screwdriver. Need a 10 millimeter to take off the lock nut off the shaft. I have to remove this lock nut. There's also a flat washer. And then our blade should come off. We might need to give it a little tap, a little bump. And there's our blade. We got to take our tapered collet shaft off. Using a seven millimeter wrench here, we uh, try to grab the flats and just it's a little bit of, just takes a little bit of force to, to get the back off. It's not terribly tight since the collet, <clears throat> since the collet usually holds it on. And there we go. We got our tapered collet shaft off. See how the seven millimeters fits on that flat? And that flat is where the blade was. You will see how the taper part works there. The blade pushes down. And then the flat part of the shaft actually is what holds the blade from spinning on you. Four more Phillips screws and the motor comes right out. External snap ring and a small washer off the shaft of the motor. And we should be able to separate the motor. If I can get enough strength in my hands to <laughs> overcome the magnets, there's our, our rare earth magnets on our outer rotor design there. See our bearings, they look to be in good shape, high quality bearings. We also see our windings where they all burn. That's where our smoke comes from in our previous uh, part of the video with our failure. So the shop vac, you know, is a mild success. I mean, it, it does work. It, it does move a lot of flow. It, it does uh, move a lot of volume of air. It doesn't have quite the pull of a normal shop vac. Um, we do have some heat build up, which was thought could possibly be the case with the design since we are restricting the inlet airflow some, or a good bit actually. So um, we could go a different route and actually drive a shop vac motor that's actually bad, right? We could actually drive a shop vac motor with the Ego motor and still be 56 volt cordless. But if you like this video today, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.